dudes, are you having trouble editing modern video file formats in DaVinci Resolve? Then this video is for you. Today, I'm going to show you how to fix your choppy playback so you can work faster, raid faster, and drastically increase your render speeds, saving you not only time, but money. So let's get into it. The following method will work for any type of camera footage, but today I will be using Canon files that are reportedly uneditable in DaVinci Resolve, which is why I'm using them. Namely, Canon R5 12-bit RAW and H.265 10-bit files. I will be running Resolve on my old 2012 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro, and I will, as you can see up here, be screen recording at the same time. This older hardware software combination will show you how important your project settings are, how to manipulate them to achieve better results, and how to use the hidden power of DaVinci Resolve settings to unlock real-time playback. This is super important in DaVinci Resolve regardless of the media type you are editing, as not everyone can achieve brute force playback speeds, as many of you, like me, don't have powerful computers. Let's have a look at some of my media file properties. You can follow along on your computer by following my lead. Select a clip in the timeline, then in your inspector, click on the metadata window. You can see my footage is 8K H.265 MP4 10-bit video. What a mouthful. And this file is an 8K RAW 12-bit video file. And for laughs, here is a 4K 100p H.265 MP4 HEVC 10-bit slow motion clip. As you can see when I try to play them back, it isn't great. Look how choppy the playback is. The frames per second is terrible and you literally can't work like this, so let's fix it. So step one to fixing this problem is to go to your playback window and now go down to the proxy mode and choose either half or quarter resolution. Okay, let's play back our footage to see if this has made a difference. Yes, it actually has given us better playback, but it isn't great. The good thing about this step is that it's only a proxy mode and whether you're in proxy mode or not, this is just a playback setting. So regardless, if I forget to turn this off when I go to render my project, DaVinci Resolve is not going to render out a lower resolution media file. DaVinci Resolve will just render out the correct version. This again is only a playback setting. Which takes us to step two. In the playback menu, go to the render cache and select smart. What this means is that DaVinci Resolve will assess for you what it thinks needs to be rendered. And as you can see here, we now have a red bar above our clip that will turn blue once complete. Playing the clip on the timeline will help force render the clip. Once rendered, you should be able to play back the media with no problems at all. Now this won't always be ideal because you'll be waiting for things to render. So that takes us to step three. Click on your settings icon here this will launch your master project settings. First, set your timeline to a lower resolution than your media type. For example, I've got 8K and 4K and I'm using a 1080 timeline. Don't worry because you can change this at any time later back up to your desired export resolution size. This step is only for project optimization. Resolve automatically rescales everything for you if you choose to change this later. Next, scroll down to your optimized media and render cache settings. We are going to change three things here. First, in the optimized media format drop down menu, select ProRes LT if you're on a Mac and DNX X SQ if on a PC. Here's a little pro tip if you choose your media type to match your delivery settings here, this will speed up your render times. This is because on export, you can choose your pre rendered cache files to help you speed up the delivery process but be sure that you select a media format that you'll be happy to deliver in if you wanna work this way. For my online content, I choose ProRes LT as my optimized media, render cache files and delivery format because for YouTube and the platform's recompression issues, it makes no difference. So mirror the settings in your render cache format settings here. Next, make sure that enable background caching is selected and change the wait time from the default of five seconds down to one. Okay, there's something here that we need to change and it's our working folders because these can very quickly fill up a drive. The best practice is to select a different drive from your main drive. This will not only help with bandwidth issues but also not clog up your internal system disk. This will ensure you don't run out of disk space. 
Essentially, this setting is rendering cache media while you work. Hit save. Now that we have a render going, we should have much better playback, which leads us to step four. If the last three steps aren't satisfactory, you can always optimize the media. But this is more of something that I would do overnight or on a lunch break, as the clips that you select to optimize will stop you from working. Optimize media is akin to string outs or play blasts without going to the deliver tab. So let's jump back into our project settings and edit our optimize media settings. For this project, I'm setting the optimized media to half. I'm not worried about the resolution. Resolve knows that half of 8K and 4K is equal to or greater than my timeline resolution of 1080p. Resolve will thus look after the downscale for me and maintain the quality. This is one of the reasons I love editing in Resolve. Now in the edit window, let's go back to our playback menu here and make sure that use optimized media if available is selected. Now that we have set up our system to optimize our files, we need to tell Resolve which media files to optimize. And this is really, really easy to do. So let's jump back over to our edit window. First, select a clip or a series of clips that you would like to optimize and right click on them. In the pop out menu, select optimize media. If you would like to see what media in your timeline is optimized, click on the media pool, then choose list view. If the optimized media column is not visible, right click on the header, go down to optimize media and turn it on. Now you'll be able to see what media has been rendered to your prior selected settings. If you have unoptimized media that you would like to render, you can always go to your media pool here. Once you have found all the unoptimized media, select that media and set it to render. Unfortunately, this is a foreground process and it will stop you from working. So if you choose to go this route, it may be better to batch render it out at the end of the day. In saying that though, once completed, real-time playback is guaranteed. If for some reason when you return to Resolve, it's not identifying or playing back the optimized media correctly, what do you do? This problem is very easy to fix. Go down to your list view here, right click on the media, go down to rediscover optimized media, now Resolve will go off and find all the optimized media and relink it for us. You can also check in the main menu that you have selected use optimized media if available, or if you wish to turn off the usage of optimized media, you can untick this option as well. You can also delete the optimized media here if you wish to. This will delete all optimized media permanently from your system for the project, which takes us to step five, change your timeline resolution. This is the ultimate hack that I briefly touched on before. So if you don't have real-time playback after steps one through four, then this is your only option left before having to transcode the media. So let's jump back into our project settings. You can see that I've set my timeline at 1080p. If your resolution is higher than this, lower the resolution. Now, as I stated before, DaVinci Resolve is resolution independent. Well, what does that mean? Okay, if I wanted to change my timeline to 4K, I can change the settings here. And now if I go back into the edit page, you can see that Resolve has auto scaled everything for me. Or if I wanted to downscale the timeline further than 1080, uh, so I can have better real-time editing, I can drop it to 720p. Again, Resolve auto scales is for me making everything easier on the editing system. Now, even though the resolution has changed, nothing has actually changed. This is a completely non-destructive workflow. When you have completed your edit and you're ready to say go grade, you can just change the timeline back. This is by far the most overlooked setting in Resolve. Just because you have 8K footage doesn't mean you need to edit in 8K or even 4K for that matter. What matters is completing the job. Now, I did say before that these techniques would drastically speed up your render times. And if you followed my advice on setting your cache and optimized media to match the delivery settings, then you would be looking at export frame rates like these. The reality is when using Resolve on laptops, combining the techniques I've shown in this video will yield the best results. You can use all of these tips at the same time. And that's it guys. If you found the tutorial useful, drop a comment down below and let me know which tip gave you the best results. I do read all the comments and if you have any questions, I will get back to you. So stay safe guys, bye for now.